I'm just whistling in the background, having fun. Hey, everybody. I'm Charlie Grace with Charlie Grace Adventures. Welcome to Travel Talk Live. This is so much fun. I love when we do these things. Um, just so you know, today is Tuesday. We do Travel Talk every Tuesday. Love this at 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. If this is your first time watching, do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button and bell to get notified. We put out really cool, fun videos all about travel and, oh, geez, just so much, so much stuff that you want to know about from tips and tricks and hacks and places to go and things to see and Arby's to try out gotta love that stuff. Also, do me a favor right now. I just hit the wrong button. Imagine that. Here we go. Um, if you would like to become, ready for this, a new member. Ah, so excited. We just opened up our membership. We have Adventure Crew and Van Fan members, and there's really cool perks that go with both of those kind of memberships here on YouTube, and we appreciate that. We're going to be doing some meetups. We're going to be doing some behind the scenes, and you guys get the videos early before anyone else gets to watch them, which is really cool. So, Anyways, just want to throw it out there tonight. We've got some people in the chat we need to say hello to because one of the fun things of live is having all our friends come out and say hi to us, including there's Gracie and Jacques. Hello, Charlie Grace, Charlie Grace and Roomies. <laughs> Hope you're having fun. And they're the really cool van fan person. Broken Nomad. Howdy, y'all. Someone who's building a van. Very excited about that. I know. Johnny Lightning. I came in early to hang with the cool kids. Of course you did, Johnny Lightning. And we appreciate your being here. Really cool. Oh, we have a new member. Speaking of new members, Gary Rice became a YouTube member. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, you know, we just got to say thank you to Gary because that's really cool. We're going to get, we're going to send you some fun stuff. Let's see. What kind of thank you do we want to send Gary? I think we will do a jumping thank you. Thank you, buddy. That is awesome. Congratulations and welcome to the fam. <laughs> I love that. All right, let's keep going. Who else do we have in the house right now? Um, we're going to bring up our guest in just a couple seconds. Coffee Nut is here. Hello, everyone. And uh, uh oh, Jai says, sitting here in Maggie Valley, waiting for the 2004 opening of the Wheels Through Time Museum. Ooh, that sounds exciting. Very cool. Um, Bree is here. Hey, Bree, how's it going? Hope you guys are doing great. Want to just let you guys right know that there is a pretty decent sized storm going across the United States. It's in the Ohio Valley all the way down towards Mississippi and Louisiana. Um, and it's sort of heading my way. So if for something happens and the electricity goes out or who knows what, you'll know why. I, I paid the light bill. So we're all good. Tornadoes, I can't control. Sorry. One of those things. Gary's like, okay, now I'm one of the cool kids. You betcha, buddy. You betcha. Well, speaking of cool kids, um, I think it is time to uh, bring on our guest. Here we go. Hey, they're special guests. It's Day Hikers from the Six. Hello. 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 <laughs> Hi, Gracie. This is so much fun. Okay, so. I got, we, we got to tell everybody how we met because this is the best, best story ever. RV people meet each other all the time, coffee shops, campgrounds. We met in line in Tampa, yeah. did we yeah. not? <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> the Tampa RV show. So it's yeah. sort of funny, like you're just talk, 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 chit, chat, chit, chat. And you're like, oh, and I'm like, oh, and you're from Canada too. How fantastic. <laughs> Oh, I love this. So we've got lots of people here who are going to have lots of questions, and I've got a few myself. Um, uh oh, speaking of cool kids, though, I got to say this. Ready for this? Hey, now, I received my hats today, so I'm definitely in the Cool Kids Club. That's right. You can only win a cool Charlie Grace hat on the live stream. Can't can't buy them. Got to win them. That's how this works. It's a lot of fun. Speaking of another member, there's Stan Lake Falls. All right, guys, our special guests have done some really amazing things, and they have a really cool YouTube channel. So if one of my moderators can drop their YouTube link, I think I put it in a little earlier. Um, actually, I can do it again right now. Look at that. Hello. Um, we want to help them make more friends, which is awesome. But I want to hear their story. How did you call you guys? Where'd you get the name Day Hikers from the Six? <laughs> yeah. Well, so we um, we originally started with the YouTube thing as a hiking channel. And so, and, and not through hikers, because most hiking channels are about through hiking, like the Appalachian Trail and all that kind of stuff. So we, we just like doing day hikes. And that's how we got into RVing because RVs are the best place to get to a trailhead, right? Yeah. Um, but, and then from the six, Toronto is, Toronto, Ontario is called the six. That's what we call it colloquially here in Toronto. So we're just day hikers from Toronto. <laughs> I love that. I love that. People were like, what's the six? I have no idea what the six is. I, yeah, I was trying to, try to figure that out. I'm like, oh, it's Toronto. It's an Ontario thing. I know what this is. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, so and I love Ontario. Ontario. Area this is good. I, I, I got to do the whole um, Ontario thing up through uh, Sault Ste. Marie and down oh, yeah. through Toronto and Niagara last year. It was so much fun. Oh, so you did. Fun. Nice. Yeah. 
Very cool. Oh my gosh. We've got our first awesome super chat from Gonzo book, Lebanon PA. Nice to see you, man. Thank you so much for being here. And thanks for the super chat. Let's see. Oh my gosh. I think Rosie's going to say, Oh, Rosie's going to say, thank you. (laughs) Oh, look at those brown eyes. Oh my goodness. That's my brown eye girl. (laughs) She's so cute. Okay. So let's talk about, let's, let's go back here for a second. Um, Since you loved hiking and that's sort of where this whole thing sort of started. What has been your favorite hike? Oh boy. Okay. That's a, that's a tough one. (laughs) That's a tough one because going to, uh, we've done hikes in New Zealand. Uh, we've done some uh, hikes in, uh, the Portuguese Island of Madeira. Mm -hmm. And we've also done like we in Alberta, uh, Banff, Jasper. So it's really difficult to pick, you know, favorites. Um, I, but, but, <laughs> but um, I've got to say that if from in New Zealand for me would be uh, Rice Peak, and then here in Canada in Alberta is the whole um, the, uh, the the six glaciers. So Ooh, nice. That's so the plain of six. The glaciers, plain of six glaciers, which is in Lake Louise. Lake Louise. I have a different one. For me, it's <laughs> definitely the, in New Zealand the Tongariro Alpine Crossing. And we did it in winter, so you have to do it guided. You can't, you know, and it's crampons and ice axes and the whole helmets and the whole nine yards. And, uh, but it was just spectacular. And uh, yeah, and it's a little bit of everything. You start kind of almost in what's like a desert, and then you go up into a vol- like a dormant volcano that's full of snow. And then you go down the other side, and it's kind of like a desert again, and then you end in a rainforest. <laughs> so it's it's just got a bit of everything. So definitely wow. for me, Tongarero. See, I love this. And uh, it, it, for our friends in the chat, if you guys want to type in what your favorite hike was, I'm curious to see what you've liked as well. Um, I know my, my buddy Johnny Lightning says, I hiked through Disney World last week with my grandkids. Does that count? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> they all count. <laughs> they all count. Absolutely. Um, I, I love to hike too. However, here's my hiking criteria. I'm going to say this right now. Um, not a fan of bears. Just saying. Yeah. It's a small things. Um, yep. Not a fan of poisonous snakes. Also another Maybe. thing. Agreed. Agreed. Um, <laughs> mosquitoes love me and so do ticks. Um, but that doesn't mean I don't go hiking. I, lo- I love all that stuff. So I'll go out and I'll do that. But I do, I, I have learned there was, there was one hike I took that I won't ever forget because <laughs> um, for about 45 minutes to an hour, my feet were never level. They were always on rocks or something for 45 minutes. Okay. And that was probably the hardest I had as far as balancing yes. and getting things, you know, so I would much prefer just a little, just even like a 15 minute stretch of just, oh, just dirt, anything. Um, <laughs> a little tough. Those are a little tough when you get those kind. I love those. Okay. So here's, here's a couple more uh, hikes. Here we go. Okay. Um, I hiked the, the trash up the curb last night. Not the same. Gary <laughs> 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 says, uh, Menhall Glacier. Oh, very nice. Very mm, nice. Yeah. Uh, protective gear there, buddy. Um, snakes aren't poisonous. Well, some are. Some are. I'm just saying. Yep. And TJ and, and Bree, she loves her favorite hikes include a waterfall. She's my oh, waterfall. Yeah. She loves yeah. to find a waterfall, which is great. I know there's something about waterfalls that always make us go, oh, no matter <laughs> how big or small. <laughs> it's just it's just it's, it's gorgeous. It's one of those serious mystic about them. It's I beautiful. know, I love it. I went waterfall chasing earlier this month, or, or late late last month, I should say. Um, Johnny says I hiked Trail Ridge a number of decades ago. Nice, very cool. Oh, nice. And uh let's see. I'm sorry, here. Oh, he's correcting me. Snakes are venomous, not poisonous. Okay. Good to know. I'm sorry. I'm glad I have someone who can correct me on these. Um, <laughs> Bigger, small waterfalls. We love them all. Yes, we do. That's true. Yeah, it's true. Very, very cool. Okay. So now that I've heard about your hikes. Jeez, guys, I know you have a lot of really cool uh, videos on your YouTube channel. And uh, I want to show this for a second, just so you guys can take a look at this. And if you haven't been there yet, guys, you need to go check them out. This is really a big deal. Um, so their YouTube channel, you guys have right now, are you ready for this? Four over four thousand subscribers. That's awesome! Congratulations! Ooh, yes, we just thank went you. past four thousand. <laughs> two <laughs> That's days big. ago. That's huge. That's huge. Yeah. And you've got and you've got over a million views, which is amazing. Fantastic! Congratulations on that. But you've got thank some you. really really great videos, and uh, it looks like you're teardrop people. Does that sound right? Yeah, we're we're small RVs for sure. So, and you know, I mean, like we started as a hiking channel and. We're doing the RVs because, frankly, that's what people like to watch, it seems. Um, But 
what we found was when we were looking, there's tons of stuff on YouTube for big trailers. There's tons of stuff on YouTube for vans and there's tons of stuff for bed on wheels teardrops. But there's that whole in between type of RV, which is what we like, which is, you know, small enough to tow with like a mid sized truck to a car. Um, but still has a bathroom and a kitchen inside and all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of the niche that we're trying to hit is um, that in-between size. And we we do like to drive a lot. We drive big distances. And so we want something that's manageable. Like even with our trailer hooked up, we can pull into a McDonald's parking lot or mm -hmm. into any old grocery store parking lot or whatever, right? Just so not quite as good as a van, <laughs> but it, it but it's close. And uh yeah, so you know that's why we got into the small thing. So not exclusively teardrops, but that in between kind of trailer. Is, I think is that is a fantastic area, quite honestly. Yeah. I mean, we were talking about this the other day about you know the majority yeah. of people can do the in between, and that's an attain that's an attainable size. It's a little easier to to work with and whatever. Not everybody wants a huge RV, you yeah. know. Not everybody wants you know. Not everybody wants a drivable. So if you have already have a vehicle, you can tow. Fantastic. And and let's be honest, a towable is a lot cheaper than a drivable. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And that was the other big thing. And I guess that's kind of something I'm passionate about is trying to get people to realize that it is, it can be affordable. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to spend 200,000 or 150,000. And I mean, just by removing the truck out of the equation, because pickups have gotten insanely expensive. Oh. So, you know, when we were when we were starting to think about buying a trailer, I mean, I was like, well, I can't afford a truck and a trailer. That's going to be like 120, 130 mm -hmm. grand, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, so then it became, let's find a trailer that we can tow with the car that we have, right? And, the, and that's, and there's not a lot out there on YouTube about that niche for whatever yeah. reason, in a way. And I, and I definitely see, and, and I go to RV shows all the time, just like you guys do. I definitely see that being something that's, ramping up because like i said especially with the cost of trucks these days people still want to go out there and do things or or many times i'd say it's a starter camper situation for those who are thinking about right. it you know and that's that's awesome yeah. there's nothing wrong it's a gateway drug yep <laughs> <laughs> exactly just saying so okay so here's the big question though what rv do you own well we own a safari condo r1723 and uh, it's claim to fame. Well, a couple of claims to fame. It's extremely lightweight. So it weighs mm -hmm. right around 2,000 pounds and it has a retractable roof. So it's kind of like a pop up camper, but it's all hard sided. And when the part that pops up is all glass, so it's glass all the way around. So mm -hmm. it's a really neat camper. Um, but it still has four, like sleeps four. Mm -hmm. So it's got two bunks in the front and then a king bed in the back. And the bunks in the front, and this, this was a big thing for us because our kids are older. I mean, my son's already in university and, you know, my daughter is 16 and she's pretty tall. And so we needed something that the bunks were actually big enough for adult sized people. And uh, so this was pretty much the only thing we could find that kind of ticked all of the boxes. Yeah. And there it is. And <laughs> I, love, I love, love, love this. I tell you, what, I, I saw one of these for the first time in Florida. Guys, I've never seen this before. And I was like, it sort of like came up like a, it, it was just this very interesting thing and it was gorgeous and bright. I was yeah. like, wow, the idea of the windows there, that is yeah. really, really cool. So um, yeah. How, how much does this weigh like a dry weight on average? Uh, so base dry weight is 1950 pounds, I think. Now okay. we put, that's without air conditioning because up here you don't really need air conditioning. So we did get air conditioning and uh, we also put a few other options on it, like a bike rack an extra propane tank and so on. So I think ours came in at 2,020 pounds. Okay. Okay. Um, nice. So, so that, and that, and a lot of vehicles could tow that. That's definitely a towable kind of weight that people do. Yeah. I love that. Exactly, okay. yeah. Johnny wants to know, are those windows glass or plastic? They're automotive glass. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. So very same, cool. same thing you'd have in your, uh, in the windshield of your car. Yeah. yeah. So is it motorized I'm guessing, or is it hydraulic? How does that pop up? Yeah. So it's, it's a, it's a hydraulic electric system. So it runs okay. off the 12 volt battery and it's based to the setup is just, you push one push button. The button. <laughs> the That's setup it. is very fast, very quick. So you just push the button and then the roof goes up. And originally I was going to get a pop-up, but then, you know, when I started looking at setting them up in a rainstorm or taking them down in a rainstorm and all that kind of stuff. Um, and also to get, 
like they were actually a little bit heavier generally mm -hmm. and they may not have a bathroom and um, and uh we have to worry about bears yeah because <laughs> we do live in canada <laughs> when you know when we bought it the like the the sort of goal was to go out west to banff and jasper and all that and so in lake louise which is one of the campgrounds we wanted to stay at they have two sections, a tent section, which is actually surrounded by an electric fence to keep the bears out. Mm -hmm. And then the RV section is not, it, it's outside of the electric fence. And if you want to stay in the electric hookup outside section, it has to be hard sided. So if you have a, if you have a pop-up tent camper, they're going to force you into the tent camping. So I don't know, it's, it's probably not that big of a deal, but for whatever reason, I, I just thought, you know what, I'm going to try to find something hard sided. And this is the one that ticked the boxes. It also, you know, you, you look at it, it's only 17 feet long, but it does have a shower. It has a bathroom. It has a little kitchen. So it's got your, you know, fresh gray black tanks. They're small, but I think uh, 16 gallon fresh, 12, uh, 16 gallon gray and 12 gallon for the black. Although the new one for this year has much bigger tanks. So I'm a little disappointed we didn't get those. <laughs> you can always trade it in. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah, we yeah. I know. I know. It's, it's, it's really cool. I um. Well, that's sort of what I have. I mean, I think I'm like 13 gray, 13 black. and But I've got 23 fresh or 24 fresh. Something got a lot of fresh. Um, however, there's a hole in my fresh water tank. So right now it's a zero fresh. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> zero. Zero. Hopefully not, the water not that out the bottom and not into the rig. Don't even want to get me started. So much fun. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Here's the question. I'm, I'm getting it fixed as we speak. Um, but have you ever rented out your RV? Because a lot of people are doing this now. Yes, we yes. have our RV out on Outdoorsy. And uh, we rent it. Um, I would say, like, basically when we're not using it in the camping season, it's out on rental. And, you know, it's been quite lucrative for us. And uh, I get a little tickle on my nose here. <laughs> and. <laughs> Yeah, and you know, it's it's been a good experience. So a lot of the people that have rented it have been people who are interested in buying one. Mm -hmm. And I'm a big proponent of, you know, before this isn't a cheap camper, especially for a 17 footer. Although I I mean I've argued with a lot of people in the comments about this, but I still think it's it's good value because mm -hmm. you know we saved all that money on the truck. <laughs> and storage. So, yeah. And storage. I mean, we store it here in the in our driveway. And so, yeah. the, you know, we were looking at all these um, details, right? Um, when you buy a, an RV of all the added costs. Yeah. So, yeah. And if you want to rent it, it's, you got to have it at the house. You can't be storing it offsite or it'd be, a, it'd be a real right. hassle then, right? Yeah. Right. But yeah. We've, we, so we've rented it to tons of people. We had the furthest it's gone on a rental. We had a gentleman who rented it, a towed it behind a Jeep uh, Wrangler all the way to Vegas from yeah. Toronto. Wow. It was out for three weeks. Yeah. And yeah, maybe even more. Wow. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It is quite, he, he really enjoyed it. Yeah. And uh, we've rented to several families just for, you know, three or four nights that wanted to uh, just give it a try. One thing that I've done, though, I, I have a minimum rental of four nights. So I'm trying to avoid the weekend party crowd, <laughs> if you know Smart. what I mean. Smart. And, uh, and also, I think for people who are trying it out, I kind of tell them, listen, if you only rent it for two nights, I mean, the first day and the last day, it's going to be setting up camp, yeah, taking down know. camp. Yeah. You're you're not familiar with hitching and unhitching. So that's, I said, you need to be out for at least four nights to get a sense of it, right? I don't want to turn you off of this because you're just stressed out trying to, trying to go through all the, because uh, it's a steep learning curve. And when I rent, I'll generally spend, I would say, on average, two and a half to three hours with the renter, taking them through how to, basically, it, it becomes like an RV course. I'm almost thinking like, you know, maybe I should just start offering an RV course. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say this. Here's here's the thought. And I tell a lot of people this. I say, one, if you're ever thinking about buying an RV, one, you should rent. But yeah. two, if you're taking the time to do that, I would have them record on their phone everything that you're walking them through. Because people who've done this before say, oh, I forgot how to turn on the heat or, oh, yeah. I forget do this and they yes. might be someplace where there's no cell signal but they could go back to that video that they took of you showing them how to pull the black tank or whatever it might be 
that's probably the best thing. Or you could do a video of just congratulations on renting my RV. Here are the things you need to know. Yeah. So I actually have a second channel, which is just for the <laughs> rental business. And, uh, and yeah. you know, that one, it has 19 subscribers. Like it's, it's just there. I send them a couple of weeks before they, their pickup comes up. I send them the links. So it has how to work the Truma, how to, Sorry. you know, how to hitch, how to unhitch. Um, generally speaking, if they're in a smaller vehicle and their hitch will allow it, I will give them a weight distribution hitch. So I got to teach them how to deal with all that. Um, it's, it's time consuming though, because it's a towable. So it takes a long time. So I have adjustable hitch. So, you know, I've got to have a great big, huge, um, what do you call it? You know, the big guns that use <laughs> and, uh, I'll, I'll have to, when the vehicle gets here, as much as I've tried to get them to measure ahead of time, it's easier just to do it when we're here. So, you know, I'll adjust the hitch, I'll change the height on the hitch, make sure that, it, so I get them set up perfectly, right? So that, so that they can tow safely. And I've got, and I've got several non-weight distribution hitches too, for the guys with the pickups that don't need the weight distribution and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, you know, so I think I, I, I agree totally. Like if, if you're thinking about getting into RVing, rent one and, you know, there's some fantastic deals too. Like the the big renting company outside of Outdoorsy and sort of all mm -hmm. the sharing sites here is called Canadream and they have relocation specials. So, you know, people tend to come from overseas and they'll rent it, say, in Toronto and drive it to Calgary. So then they need to, somebody to drive it back to Calgary. So I've seen them as cheap as 70 bucks a night. Mm -hmm. I even saw one that was a, a, a class B van they wanted to get from Toronto to Montreal and it was $29 a night. Oh, nice. So, yeah, so you go on, you look for those relocation specials and stuff. You can get some, but definitely rent and give it a try. That's how we, our first RV experience yeah. was renting. Was renting. Yeah. And that, that yeah, wasn't sure. because we were thinking about buying an RV. And I, I have a feeling you're going to ask us about New, New Zealand later. So maybe I'll <laughs> go <laughs> <even remember. laughs> this, this is good. This is really good. Okay, God, hold on. Before I forget, the Gonzo book just said he's heading to Ohio tomorrow to see the eclipse of the sun. And I'm so, so jealous. There's a lot of people awesome. heading out there. And thank you so much for the super chat, buddy. I appreciate that. Uh, let's give you a really fun... <laughs> Awesome. And good luck and have fun. We want to see pictures. We want to see pictures of you guys going to see the eclipse. Now, don't take pictures straight. Don't look at the sun. You know, get the special glasses, all those kind of things. There's a lot of people looking for this. And I guess uh, the weather might hold out. Let's hope. Let's cross our fingers. Yay. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what's going on. And then also, let me keep going here real quick. Uh, there we go. The Broken Nomad found your camper so people can see it. There's a link there. Very nice. Uh, it says, your hair looks great tonight. Did you get a cut recently? Um, well, thank you. I'll, 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 I'll tell you what. Uh, yeah, I, I went to go see, I have a hairdresser named Maher. I can't make this up. That is his name. It's pretty funny. Um, Maher is in charge of this, these locks. It's pretty funny. Um, Naj came in. Hey, Naj, good to see you. Hope you're doing great. She's like, hello, Charlie Grayson panel. Thank you so much. We are at that time. I've got a few people here in the house. It is time. And we're getting, then we're going to move on to something really cool because we're going to talk about international travel because these guys go hiking everywhere. If you only knew. Here we go. But let's, let's, I think it's time for a giveaway. What do you think, guys? I think it's time for a giveaway. Let's give away a hat. Okay. As, as my guest, this is where, this is where the fun comes in. You get to pick a word. And you're like, what kind of word are we talking about? A word that anyone could spell very easily. And we're going to make them type it in the chat and then they get to win something. So what word would you like to pick? Super show, because that's where we met you. Really? Okay. We're Oh, guys, this, this is good. See if they can spell this. <laughs> okay. All right. Super show. All, like, all, to, all one word. Just like that, guys. Just like yep. I'm sharing on the screen. So if you want to win a brand new Everyday's an Adventure baseball hat, they are dad hats. They are pretty cool. I would, I would have one right now, but I've been sending and mailing a bunch of these out, which is fun. So they're blue or black and uh, the winner gets a hat and broken nomad. You're not allowed to win because you won last time. Sorry, buddy. Um, I should make a disclaimer on that. If you did win, you cannot have five hats. Um, so no, yeah. When you write like that, no, it's got to look just like it is on the screen, buddy. Just like not Naj understands the rules. That's perfect. <laughs> <Not Naj. laughs> All right, Gary says, I stepped out for a bit. I may have missed it. If you talked about already, do you have solar and what is your setup? Good question. Oh, yeah, solar. So we do not have solar. or Well, no. actually, no, sorry. We. So I have an external solar panel that I 
you know, that I plug in, I have a, a charge controller directly on the battery. So it's mm -hmm. not integrated into the RV system at all. And, uh, but yeah, so I can, it, it, it just has enough, I guess, collection to keep it. If we have sun all day, it'll keep the trailer going all day. Gotcha. Kind of yeah. Okay. Und understood. Do you have um, a AGM or lithium batteries? We have lead acid, not even AGM. That, that is, uh, the next project. <laughs> Understood. So I'm, I'm thinking the, about buying a, a heated lithium battery for it. So. But the new model of our uh, trailer now comes with the lithium battery. Yeah, it's standard yeah. on the new one. Yeah. Well, I will say, you know, it, it gets pretty cold up in Canada. Just saying. Got to keep those lithium batteries. You know, if they don't charge it, they're cold. So yeah, got to be careful. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. But our friends Bobby and Leslie came in tonight. Thanks for being here. Oh, my gosh. I haven't seen you guys in forever. I appreciate your being here. And no, it's not Snooper Show. It's Super ah! Show. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are killing me. I love these things. I know. Naja's, Naja's laughing. Okay. Uh, we've got some entries. We will take, we'll take it one more second here. And then I'm going to click a button. And we're going to give away a hat. And you know what? Let me just explain how this works, guys. These hats were professionally designed uh, by moi. They were made locally here in Alabama. So which means I get to package them myself. This is not just a click of a button. I mean, these are things that I made because they're quality. I want to make sure you guys get something really, really nice. So um, when you when you win, we'll tell you what we got to do. But let's click a button and see who's going to win. Here we go. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies. <laughs> who's going to be? Oh, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. It's Naj! Yay! Yay. All right. Oh, that's awesome. nice. <laughs> Yay, these hats are awesome. They are pretty cool, I'm telling you. Okay. All right, Naj, so here's the scoop. All you got to do, you got to email me, contact at charliegraceadventures.com. Preferably do it tonight with your address, and then I will ship them out first thing in the morning. Uh, granted, we don't have a tornado and it blows me away. This will be done. I will get that over to you. So you'll have something to keep that nice sun off your eyes as you're down in Florida, just enjoying the summertime. Oh, my goodness. Love that. She's awesome. Everyone's saying congratulations. Yay. Wait, wait, wait. So, so we get Charlie. No, you don't get my DNA. There might be a, 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 a um, extra strand of red hair somewhere stuck in the tape. I will say that. That happens sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Are there red hairs in clear there? <laughs> <laughs> it happens. You guys are killing me. All right. All right. So let's talk about some international things because you guys have traveled internationally. Um, where have you been? Well, oh. this whole thing, uh, <laughs> whole thing started when we uh, when we went to the Portuguese island of uh, Madeira, and okay. it is it's breathtaking um, and lots of because uh, it's all mountains, so there's lots of hikes, um, and so it 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 piqued the curiosity and it's yeah we weren't uh, we weren't hikers before no, we went there, before. but they have. And the neat thing about the hikes there is that they're accessible in the sense that you don't like their sidewalks and stairs and they have railings, but you're literally on the like ridge of a mountain, yeah. like right at the peak. Uh, wow. You can, you, you can do hikes from peak to peak. You don't have to be, I mean, yeah, I guess you have to have a certain level of fitness. I mean, we didn't finish the, the big hike no. there either. We tried it twice. <laughs> we, <but no. laughs> we were not prepared. <laughs> Definitely not in shape and not prepared. Yeah. In but, any you're, but you're never going to feel unsafe, right? Yeah. And and something clicked for me, which was just, I don't know, for, for whatever reason, I'd driven through the mountains all a million times and thought that it was just, never realized that it was actually attainable for normal people to climb them, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so we, so, so that trip sort of got, got us thinking like, this is really cool. Like we want to do this again. So then we decided, okay, well, where would be a neat place to go? And so I, I wanted to go to Australia, but everybody else in the family, we have a somebody who's like seriously afraid of spiders, like not, not even joking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and so Australia kind of got nixed, but then it's like, oh, New Zealand is basically Australia, but without all the things that are trying to kill you. True, true. <laughs> so there's, so, yeah, there's, there's no predators in New Zealand. There's, you know, it's a, it's very safe from a nature point of view. Um, and breathtaking, beautiful. The nature is so vast, so immense. Like it's hard to explain. You you really just have to see it. But um, so, so we yeah. So we we decided to go to New Zealand. And I guess looking at the question on the screen there. So what advice? I mean, you know what? Like money is always an issue. But if you can afford it, don't be afraid. Like just go for it because 
no matter where we've gone, you know, we've even we had a lot of fun in Florida. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, so wherever you go, I mean, it, it's somewhere different than home and you meet awesome people and you you have lots of fun. Um, but yeah, I like I would definitely recommend New Zealand. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's on my list. It's, it's on my list. But everybody speaks English there, so it's not there's no language barrier or anything. Uh, it is a little tricky getting used to driving on the wrong side of the road. Uh, I did drive on the wrong side of their road a few times by accident. Um, but, uh, you know, and really the most affordable way to see New Zealand is by RVing. And that's that's how we got into RVing is um, we decided that it just made the most sense to rent an RV to see New Zealand. And and that's kind of how we just thought, hey, this RVing thing is kind of cool. <laughs> like, you guys you know, have was... great, great videos on it. I think a lot of people were talking about, you know, where do you start? How do you rent? What do you do? Um, there have been quite a few people who've gone over. One of my favorite little shows I've been watching is Men in Kilts. Have you seen Men in Kilts? How they went over to New, New Zealand for you guys who watch Outlander. You know, it's the two main um, uh, male characters in it. And one, of, one li uh, lives there permanently in uh, New Zealand because he was also in, on The Hobbit when they did the movie The Hobbit. So he ended up just staying there. And I can't blame him. It's gorgeous. It yeah, is. it is. It's, it's yes. stunning. Yeah, and, for yeah. sure. And then if you want to come to Canada, hey, we have even here in Ontario, uh, <laughs> yeah. we we are like we our favorite, favorite place to go is Lake Superior, Northern yeah. Ontario, and it's breathtaking. Um, actually, we're in the works of... Uh, yes, it's turning out to video. be the hardest video <laughs> that I've ever made. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so travel travel guides are much more difficult than... Uh, especially when you're trying to cover a, an area that's so big. So we're, we're working on a travel guide from Sault Ste. Marie to Thunder Bay. So, mm -hmm. and so that's just like, you know, think the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Mm -hmm. So if you just go across the bridge into Canada at Sault Ste. Marie, then and and you just drive north from there along the shore of lake superior and then uh eventually you turn west and you get to the north shore and you right. take that thunder bay and if you keep going you get to minnesota kind of thing and um so anyway th that area is i mean hiking fishing paddling um just you name it outdoors like, outdoors outdoors yeah I mean, if oh, you all the good outdoors, stuff. that's the place to be and and it's it, i wouldn't say it's mountainous but it's it's almost mountainous. Oh, look at the question. I can see that. Who did you rent from in New Zealand when you rent an RV? So we booked our RV on a site called Motorhome Republic. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of cool because they show them all. Like they show all of the different companies all on one site. Um, I've, I've, I have read some people had some issues with their rentals with Motorhome Republic. But I got to say for us, it was oh. awesome. Like... I had to work with them a little bit on the phone and the service was great on the phone. Everything was good. Uh, we ended up with one from a company called Maui, which is funny because we didn't actually book one from Maui, but Maui, there, there's like a, a company that owns, I think three different brands and Maui is their top brand. And then Brits is the middle one. And I can't remember what the lower one is. So we'd rented a Brits, but when okay. we got there, they only had a Maui one. So we ended up getting a, a Mercedes class, uh, a Mercedes chassis class C okay. it, with a, with a diesel. And I'm telling you, this thing was awesome. Like it had, it, it was, I think it was quicker than my car. At home. <laughs> <laughs> it really had a ton of power and it, it got great gas mileage. And, uh, and the funny thing is, is that I knew I wanted diesel because diesel in New Zealand is a lot cheaper than gas. Yeah. There's some kind of tax thing involved too, like for, for tourists. So anyways, yeah. you avoid that gas tax if you oh. if you have a diesel. So um, yeah, and, and a neat little trick too is that instead of renting in Auckland, we rented it in Christchurch, which meant, so all the international flights fly into Auckland, mm -hmm. which is on the North Island, and then Christchurch is on the South Island. The, the really big mountains and sort of the, the famous scenery parts of New Zealand are on the South Island. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, what we did is, so we, we rented it, from Christchurch, and then we dropped it off in Auckland. Everybody else does the opposite. So the price is a lot cheaper going from the South Island to the North Island, and the flights are dirt cheap. So um, I think we paid like 30 bucks a person to fly to Christchurch. We picked up the thing there, and the, it was so much cheaper that we actually took the ferry across for free. There the, you go. So yeah, yeah neat little 
little things like that. Yeah, when you travel, do a lot of research. Uh, Greg did a lot of research. Yeah, uh, I, I'm the trip sure. planner for sure. Yeah, he is. <laughs> So because there's always these little details and you end up finding out that, oh, you know, I can save some money if I do it the opposite of everybody else. <laughs> if I do right. it. Yeah. All right. But, but she wouldn't know unless she really you know, dove into these things. So that's what I'm oh, saying. This is part. really good information because you're right. Everyone starts here and they go here. But if you could rearrange it and yeah, yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. you know, what? another good piece of advice is find find a good Web page or a YouTube page or a YouTube uh, channel or whatever who's done who's who's done a really good series on the place that you're going. So for us, it wasn't on YouTube. It was actually a yeah. website. It was by a, a Polish woman and it was called in, in a faraway land. And she's got phenomenal website on the Rockies in Canada, New Zealand, yeah. the Dolomites, like the, the Alps mm -hmm. in Europe, just everything. Right. And I mean, it's, it's awesome because, so I'd love to tell you that I really did this amazing research, but she did all the amazing research <laughs> and I just kind of took advantage of it. Right. So I think that like YouTube is a great resource and, uh, and, you know, finding a, finding a travel blogger or vlogger who's mm -hmm. gone to the place that you're thinking of can save you a lot of time. And usually they're going to have affiliate links so you can help them out a little bit. And, uh, sometimes they'll have discount links too, so you can save yourself a little bit of money too. So it's like just a win, 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 right. For everybody. So absolutely. Absolutely. No, you're right. And, and it's a big thing really quick. Um, so it looks like I've got a friends, a couple friends here who the thought ran across their mind of renting out their RV just for the eclipse here in Indiana, because the eclipse is coming. <laughs> and I know a lot of people were thinking about that. So that's something, you know, it's if you're thinking about renting, that's an idea. Um, Johnny says, don't go swimming in Lake Superior, but don't ask him how he knows. Oh, well, we go swimming oh, in Lake Superior do. all the time. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> I will say at the beginning of the summer, yeah, maybe you don't it's want to. It's a little cold. It's a little cold. Just saying. I, I, I can only imagine that one. Yeah. Beginning of the summer. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I'm from way up north, so... Um, Oh, he will just yeah. dip in any I'll, I'll jump in anything. I don't That's care. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are Okay, so let's talk about cold for a second. I, I know we've been talking about New Zealand, um, but have you guys winter camped in Canada in your rig? Yeah, so that that's actually the last or two of the last three videos were about that. So I decided to, um, you know, give it a try because I'd never done it before. And uh, so I went up to Algonquin Park, which is three hours north of Toronto. And uh, yeah, so I temperatures got down to minus 10 degrees mm. Celsius. So that's not crazy cold, but that's pretty darn cold. <laughs> so what do you do? What do you do to stay warm? I mean, you've got this amazing, you know, camper, but I'm sure it's not like you can't keep it super warm. So what do you do? Well, you know what? It, so we have a we have a furnace in the camper, and uh, so I ran the furnace. The problem the problem is is humidity. So once it starts to get really cold, right? Your windows start to sweat. Even in our trailer, if if it gets really cold, even the walls can sweat because it's all sort of metal um yeah but so so i think if if i wasn't having to crack windows and the vent then mm. i probably would have been fine warmth wise but because i was i so i'd crack a side window and the vent didn't have the fan on but just right, right. to allow the humidity to escape the trailer right the problem is all the heat was escaping the trailer <laughs> too <laughs> so good um, point. yeah so the first night i i opened things up pretty big and, and it's funny because according to the forecast, that was the coldest night, but actually I was pretty comfortable that night. Uh, the second night, it wasn't as cold. It was probably only got down to just below freezing. So that night I was fine. And I did, I kind of, cause I didn't have any humidity the first night. So I didn't open things as much. And then I ended up with humidity in the second night. Um, and then the third night, it was the coldest night by far. And I think it might've been that it actually got a little bit more humid outside. And honestly, like, but what I did, I brought, I brought my winter sleeping bag. Um, we still, even though we have an RV, we still kind of camp like we're campers. So yeah. we, on all of our trips, we sleep in sleeping bags. We don't, we, we don't. keep it very minimalist. Okay. So yeah, yeah we all have um, uh, our sleeping bag and we do have a comforter, you know, mm -hmm. we bring each, uh, each bring uh, a comforter just in case. But uh, yeah, we do, we have the sleeping bags and it's easier because we don't have a lot of, uh, storage being a small RV. Right. So instead of bringing all kinds of bedding, uh, you know, a sleeping bag, you just roll it up the next morning, put it to the side or inside of the storage and off you go. That's so I, for this one though, I brought, I also brought a fleece 
liner, which is basically like a fleece sleeping bag that mm -hmm. was inside of my winter sleeping bag. And then I also had a third sleeping bag in case I got cold because I didn't want to take any chances. Because I have I have done some winter camping up north in like minus 30, which is like, and uh, I can tell you that it's almost impossible to stay warm in that kind of temperatures. But it, it wasn't too bad. Uh, that third night I was a little cold though. So I, I had to get up, I turned up the furnace, closed the windows a little bit, you know, and, uh, and then I was able to sleep okay. But I mean, you know, compared to tent camping, it was still oh, high yeah, luxury. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I have an idea and, and, I've, and I've done winter camping. I actually love winter camping. I'll be the first to admit it. I really do. And I'm, I'm, you know, wear a hat, wear, a, you know, to get yourself a nice, you know, wear wool, wear merino wool, like a nice layer. Yeah. If you can wear yes, I'm allergic yes. to silk, so I can't wear silk, but um, you know, a nice long johns, get yourself, you know, don't go too crazy if it's not breathable. Cause you don't want to get sweaty. Cause then you get cold, right? There's that yeah. happy spot. You got to have a little bit of both. Um, but I thought about this too, while you're talking about ventilation, this is big. Wouldn't you think at some point in time, they would think about us winter campers and put that ventilation on a floor level as opposed to a ceiling level. So you'd have options. Just thinking about this, some kind of small fan or something that you could open up um, just for that reason alone, because I do have a max air vent fan in my, in my van. I've got two actually one in the bathroom, one in the, the main, main portion. And I love using them in the, in the summertime. It's needed. It's yeah. absolutely needed. But in the weird time, not so much. I want to keep it in. So just put it out there, coming up with some ideas for my van building people, which by the way, I think Midwest van builders just joined us. I see Johnny's journey was here. Oh my gosh. Thanks so much for being here. Um, she goes on live after us. So we'd like to go give her a nice raid. She builds amazing vans. I'm so proud to, to have her be my friend. And she and her wife, Kelly, are actually two that inspired me to get my first van. So that's, that's really cool. Love having her here. Um, Broken Nomad says, I remember waking up and falling asleep against a rock wall while deer hunting and seeing bear tracks that went down the wall around my feet and kept going. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. I am good. <laughs> totally good. Airstreamer says, we love our bed sheets. Oh, and quilts. You know, I'm. this is the thing. I will tell you right now. Um, I have been, I like a bed. If I'm going to be, I, I do, I stay in my van for months at a time now because I go places and I'm, and I'm gone. So although mm -hmm. I love, love, love the sleeping bag minimalist idea because I think it's fantastic. I now have a real mattress and I've got that thing just perfect with a wool blanket and a comforter. And I'm like, oh, it's like nice and plush and happy. Mm -hmm. um, but with summertime coming, it's going to change. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, it's already starting to get really hot down here in the Southeast United States. I'm in Alabama. So um, I got to think about what I'm going to need for the summertime because it's going to get hot. I'm ready to come yeah. back up to you guys. I'm ready to go way up to Michigan, Ontario, Lake Superior, Lake Huron. I love yes. this. Yeah. You should. Yes. Beautiful. <laughs> beautiful up there. I'm telling you guys, if, if you love the Caribbean blue, if you love those beautiful crystal clear things, yes, you got to get to Canada. Cause once for you're there, sure. you're like, Oh you my God, those crystal clear Actually, waters. We did. We went beautiful. camping this, this past summer on Lake Huron in uh, Tobermory or, well, what is it called? Bruce Peninsula Bruce National Peninsula. Park. Yeah. But anyway, uh, if you check it, there's a video, of course. So check it out. Or is there a video? <laughs> now, Bruce yeah. Peninsula, isn't that, isn't that where yeah. uh, Singing Sands and the grotto and those kind of things? Are yeah. The grotto? yeah, the grotto. So the yeah, grotto sure. is unbelievable. You know it. Very good, Charlie. <laughs> My, I, I did, we, we, I, you want me on your trivia team for geography? I can do this. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Even I was shocked by how the water was yeah. in the grotto. Oh, and we have a hiking video on the, it's also called Lion's Head, um, Lion's Head Lookout. Yes, and that one, we, we, it was a winter hike we did, Ooh. but you it's, get to to the top of the of the hill and and then you, you get to, you see the water and it's so blue. <laughs> It's, it's imagine so, Jamaica with snow. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, what the it's hype was like. Contrast. <laughs> the, oh my gosh, beautiful! Yeah, would, <laughs> that'd be beautiful. I'm just, I'm telling you, you guys, if you've never been up in that area, you gotta go. It's one of those like I, I don't know. We everyone says, oh Florida, oh Florida. No, Canada's got you beat. I'm sorry. I like <laughs> Florida for two months, maybe three. Like in the winter time, it's nice to have yeah. a little warm something. I'm good. I, I got that. But the mosquitoes and the bugs and the other things that come with Florida, they can stay there. <laughs> yeah, we, we actually tried to do a hike when we went to the RV show. Oh my goodness. And we didn't have any bugs. No. <laughs> didn't work and out. Yeah, that hike didn't last very long. We <laughs> went we went about 
three or four hundred meters each direction. And then we're like, <laughs> we're we like, can't do this. No, we're, we're gonna, gonna go get walk. eaten alive. If we no, keep going. no. I will. I will tell you right now. I was staying at at um, a county park. True story. It was around uh, middle of February, and the noceums, the little tea tie bugs, which I didn't think were a big deal. I'm like, oh, they're not a mosquito. What's the big deal? And there were Canadians that were camping down there that had to go to the hospital because they went for a hike. They didn't have on bug spray and they were covered. It looked like horrible chicken pox. I felt so sorry. And she had this one lady had to go to the hospital and get some cortisone shots. And wow, I just, it was bad. I felt so yeah. sorry. Bad reaction. Yeah. yeah. She had yeah. a bad reaction. Yes. Yeah. I love just, it. Okay. So 400 meters we hiked at. Same thing. I had, I had killed so many mosquitoes. I had blood all over. My we weren't arms. enjoying it because we were just like, Constantly, constantly, it, I know the whole time. So, <laughs> having said that, if I'd had bug spray, I would have we would have on. kept going because it was yeah. beautiful. The yeah. Well, let me tell you my secret. Ready for this? Because the broken nomad will tell you, um, he is my my wilderness survival prep guy thing. He always has great great examples. Um, Sawyer has a bug lotion that will last for about fifteen hours, and it's fantastic and it works. As far as I'm concerned, send me a gallon. I love this stuff. Um, so <laughs> if you're going to go out, it, it works fantastic. It, it doesn't have a big, bad smell. It's not very harmful for you. It's one of those nice. things that comes in little bottles. You can get an REI. You can get it online as well. So it's a Sawyer product. Just look for Sawyer bug uh, repellent. Love it, love it, love it. Um, and for, for a person who has who drinks sugar water all day long, because I'm a Southern girl, so we drink sweet tea. So I got, I got sweet blood. They love me. Um, oh. <laughs> always fun. Gonzo Buck is coming back in strong with another super chat. Are violets are violets really blue or are they violet? Good question. Mm. I don't mm. know. Is violet really a color or is it just a name? Hmm. I'm going to have to think about that one. I don't know. See, now you're, you're asking me the big trivia questions. These are going to come up, guys. Now I'm going to find one. Oh, my gosh. Well, here we go. Thank you, buddy. Thanks for the money. We're definitely going to get some gas money from the Gonzo book today. So thank you. I think I've got enough for a gallon. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> this is going to at least get me to Bucky's. That's, these are the important things in life, right? Mm -hmm. So um, let me go back here. Oh gosh, here it is. Uh, he, I know he'd say it. Promethean and Picarid. I never can say this. Picaridin from Sawyer. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Fantastic though. Fantastic. Yeah. Airstreamer said, um, Michelle hiked Tobermory when she was a Girl Scout. Aw. Oh, right on. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, it says uh, wear the lotion and you won't have to worry about that. I I know if I just wear the lotion, that's exactly right. Um, it's a flower, so they're purple. Johnny would know. Johnny knows these things. That's why we keep Johnny around. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. These are my trivia guys. You know, if we need a trivia team, we are we are set. I We're was going to say set. purple, but I wasn't confident in my color knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. Under okay, so here's the real big question because I, I know we've got some planner. Um, how do you decide where you're going to go next? Where are you going to travel to next? Well, sometimes a lot has to do with budget. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what budget permits at the time. Um, I would say mountains, though. Mountains. <laughs> We're drawn, drawn to mountains. Um, and Lake Superior. Yes. Yeah, for sure. So. And uh, but this summer we have a family wedding that we're going to. So actually, I, it, it was actually very sad. So I, for those of you that don't know, booking campsites in Banff and Jasper, it's kind of like a lottery kind of like, you know, it's like yeah. winning the lottery. And I had two weeks of campsites booked in Waterton National Park, Banff, Jasper, Yoho, Kootenai, all of the the mm -hmm. Canadian Rocky National Parks. And then when I the wedding got dropped, I'm like, I had to cancel all of those <laughs> sites. And it would be like just such an awesome trip. But anyway, so we are going to somewhere you would never guess. So the wedding's in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Oh, okay. And uh, so we are going to go to Grand Beach oh. in just north of Winnipeg. And fun fact. It was ranked at one point by Playboy as one of the top beaches in the world. <laughs> really? In the middle of the prairies in Canada. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. So Good we've, to been know. There we've been there before. Yeah. It, so there's two big lakes in Manitoba, like huge lakes in Manitoba. They're, they're fairly shallow, Lake Winnipeg and Lake Manitoba. But they're big enough you can't see from one side to the other. So they're, they're almost as big as the Great Lakes. And, um, and they have just phenomenal beaches. And... So we're hoping that we get lucky enough to score a full hookup site there. Uh, it's it's another lottery campsite booking situation. 
but the it's a beautiful beach like the coast is it goes on for kilometers and mm -hmm. white sandy beach the, the kind i like yeah and the water is, <laughs> is the water warms up the lakes aren't particularly deep so it warms up pretty quickly yeah. and uh just beautiful place to swim yeah uh, they get pretty yes. big waves though so it, it can really you know, yeah, so it's it's kind of like being on a freshwater ocean kind of thing. It's like surfer dudes. I'm just trying to picture this right now. So, <laughs> so Interesting. But okay. yeah, so you know, so this year it might be less hiking and more just kind of lying on the beach. There are some cool hikes around there though too that we want to do. So we'll we'll definitely check those out as well. Yep. Um, and then go to the wedding. Uh, my mom still lives up there just a few hours from there, so we'll spend a a, a few days at home too. And yeah. Very nice. Mooch docking in the in the, in the driveway. <laughs> mooch docking. Oh no! I, we need to have like a code word because it always comes up: mooch docking or boon docking. Whenever those comes up, we gotta do something fun. Um, if you don't know what mooch docking is, for those of you watching and listening, it is when you go to someone that you know and with your RV, and you uh, they allow you to plug into their electricity and or water. It's mm -hmm. fantastic. <laughs> well, fantastic. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's, a, it's a good thing. I love this. Well, okay, so. You guys, so you've got plans. This is good. And I, I honestly, I've had some plans. I've had like this weird year where I wasn't sure exactly. I had a few trips sort of in the, in the hopper and I had some few meetups in the hopper and I've got some things going on, but I wasn't sure in between where it was all going to, going to pan out. So I've sort of been a little loosey goosey on, on some stuff, but I definitely know that I'm going to have some sea, seafood in the Northeast. I'm going to go like towards mm -hmm. Maine and, and work yes. down in uh, Pennsylvania, but yeah, Banff, yeah. Is on my, Banff is on my to-do list. Yes. And they getting, you're right. Yeah. Awesome. And I got to go, but I got to figure out how to get a place to stay and all the other kind of stuff. So that, that's on my list. I got to do that. Well, um, I actually have a video about how to get a web bank, uh, blah, a campsite in Banff. You should check it out. There you go, guys. Hear that? It's, it's not okay. like you have, there's a day that the, the booking site launches. And as long as you go on that morning, you probably would get a site on the date that you want. Okay. Uh, okay. You don't go on at that time, though. It's not going to happen. <laughs> okay. What would, you say is, what would you say is the best time of the year to go to Banff? We were there in... We were there at the beginning the, of the summer? The beginning of the summer. Yeah, June. So June? it depends. Like, honestly, if I could do it all over summer. again, I would have gone later in the summer because they'd had a late melt uh, about okay. two years ago. And so we couldn't do a lot of the high elevation hikes we wanted to do because they were okay. the trails were closed and they weren't letting people through because of all the snow and avalanche risk and ice and all that kind of stuff. Even in July, if you can believe it. Wow. Um, so if you want to do high elevation stuff, probably hit it probably late August, you know, or August, September yeah. would probably be the best time. Um, if, you know, if, uh, if you want to avoid the crowds, I would say May and June. But just okay. know that you're, you're, you're more limited. There's to, there's still yeah. a lot of snow and higher elevations, right? But right. Um, that doesn't mean there's still tons, tons of stuff to do. And the mountains look prettier when they're snowy. So that's true. Um, that's true. That. I, understand. Yeah. I, I can see that. I think that's fantastic. Yeah. Well, I'm, I yeah. appreciate the heads up and I will definitely check out the video because <laughs> it's on yeah. my list of things to do. I'm so excited about this. You have no idea. So uh, so what's coming up next? I mean, you've got a video coming out. Got to do your first big travel travel video, right? That's it. That's, that's big. Right. Yeah. We're working on the Lake Superior travel video. So um, we still have. So we actually we went to the big RV show here in Toronto. So we did walkthroughs. So we did a couple of them just dropped a couple of days ago. Um, really lightweight trailers that are made up here in Canada called Pro Light. That's mm -hmm. out now. So there's I've got a couple more walkthroughs of other Pro Light trailers, and then we went through all of the Safari Condo trailers, so the manufacturer that makes ours. Uh, including the new version of ours with the big tanks and the lithium batteries and all that kind of stuff. Nice. Um, and they have a nice, like they have a nice big dual axle trailer that's less than 3000 pounds and they have a fixed roof version of ours. And so we did walkthroughs of those trailers. So those will be coming out. Um, there's a few hiking videos as well in the hopper. Um, and oh, we're also reviewing our bike rack. So I've, I filmed mm -hmm. it. I filmed it when I did the winter camp. Yeah, because we have a lot of people asking about the bike rack. <laughs> yeah, a lot yeah, of people ask in the what? comments. Yeah. So it's a, it's I'm a... looking to change mine too, so I understand. Yeah. And so anyway, so so that'll be coming out soon. And I'm, th I'm toying with the idea of doing a solo trip, so just me, um, along the Appalachian Trail. So take the trailer and do day hikes of all the big peaks. Nice. in each state so i think it starts in what georgia 
-hmm. and then uh, up through Tennessee and Virginia and uh, it's gorgeous. Et cetera, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. I, I, I can see I've been on it. I haven't done the whole thing, but I've definitely been on it. It's pretty cool. So that so that's one I'm not committing to that yet, but I'm 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 in the planning stages and I'm thinking about doing that. Okay, so, bring the beer spray. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely bring the bug spray or the uh, the Sawyer. <laughs> yeah, I love it. All right, wait, before I forget, Gonzo book said, apparently has a prediction going on. I predict I will win the next giveaway. Oh, All you're right. killing me. I love this. You guys are so <laughs> funny. Okay, well, I predict you're going to get a panda. Thanks for the super chat, man. You guys are rocking it. I love this. <laughs> Crazy pandas. Crazy pandas, I tell you. I think he's just wanting me to play every single one of my fun thank yous, which is really fun. Yeah. Um, now I was just saying bear spray. Bring that bear spray. And yeah. uh, we're gonna make it's Georgia time. to Maine. Yeah. Yeah, that's what Georgia it is. to Maine. So there you go. Yeah, it's it's a it's a hike, but it's a hike. Oh, You're yeah. a hiker. Well, I'm, right. I'm gonna drive and, and bring the trailer and I'm just gonna do day hikes. I just want to do the the big peaks. So maybe I'm one gonna... in each state. That's that's the idea. So I'm gonna do through hiking RV style. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Well, guys, I just want to say thank you so much for being here. It's so much well, fun. You know whatever you're going to meet. And it's been a pleasure to learn more about yes. you guys and introduce you to more people in the community. Thank you yeah. for inviting us. We really <laughs> it's appreciate a pleasure it. to meet you. <laughs> Had a lot of fun. Oh, yes. And so much uh, fun. Cool. I'm going to have you guys go down the basement for a second. Hold on. Don't leave. There's milk and cookies. You know, just hang out down there. I'll be right there. Give me a second. We're going to say a little thank you to a few people here. Um, hold on a second. Here we go. We'll push a button. They are so sweet. Oh my gosh, guys. Don't you just love that? Well, I love bringing new members in the community. You can learn about what's going on. They've got a wealth of knowledge, especially, you know, like they said, with that, you know, in between RV, that little towable that you can tow and not have to buy a new truck or other things like that. And I love, love, love their towable RV. It is really, really cool. I got to admit that. But I do want to say thank you because you know what? We've got new members now and every single live stream, we're going to do a thank you to our members. It might happen at the beginning. It might happen at the end. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But you know what? Right now, let's say thanks to our members. All right. Thanks. Thanks. This is awesome. Thank you to our members. Um, if you want to be a member, please hit that join button and you can be a part of our membership for our adventure crew and our van fam and be invited to all sorts of really cool meetups and huddles and things like that that we're having throughout the United States, States and even probably Canada. Who knows? We might go to Canada. I do love me some, some uh, you know, Canadian food, Canadian music, Canadian camping, all about it. So until next week, uh, we will see you guys. Have a fantastic week. And just remember that every day is an adventure. <laughs>